The Food Sovereignty Summit took place October 26th through the 29th. Co-hosted by the Oneida Nation and First Nations Development Institute, the summit was held on the Oneida Reservation in Oneida, Wisconsin. Tribes from across the nation, including Hawaii and Alaska, Canada and South America, came together to share their experiences with each other and to build healthy food systems for their respective communities. One of the keynote speakers, Lori Watso, of the Shakopee Midwakatan Sioux community, spoke of the importance of food and health in our native communities. As a tribal leader and a health professional, a piece of this complex issue that I am most passionate about is food, clean food because food is the foundation of our health. Food is where good health begins. And it is, it is an arena in which major progress must be made in our native communities. I think this is awesome. I love seeing the amount of people that have came this year compared to last year. And the first year I heard it's been completely growing since then, so it's great. Those in attendance shared why they were there and the importance of food sovereignty to their communities. Isaiah, what prompted you to decide to attend these sessions? Well, um, I work with tribes and we work with health issues and um, I want to learn a lot more about food sovereignty and how we bring healthy um, fruits and vegetables into our communities and also build capacity to grow our own food. I think we can think of food sovereignty in different ways. Like we could think of it as both like our tribe doing food sovereignty, but then also how do we as individual families or people do food sovereignty of our own, like growing our own garden small in our yard type thing versus, you know, the whole tribe has a huge garden and looking at it through those different lenses. Leotis McCormick talks about harvesting the salmon and why taking the salmon's life is to be treated sacredly. You go out to the lodge, you go those fish return because our teaching is you don't handle anything sacred without first making yourself, cleansing yourself, cleaning yourself off to make sure you know how to handle something that comes from Creator. So it's not just fishing, it's the preparation when we go collect those fish. Over the three days of the summit, those who attended participated in experiential learning, from the Buffalo Overlook to what it takes to maintain a 500 head beef farm, to Oneida's own 80 acre organic farm, Junhenkwa where participants were able to see how a greenhouse operates. Other participants traveled to the Oneida Orchard, where they learned about the many varieties of apples and what it takes to maintain an orchard. Pruning off most of these small shoots. From the orchard, we traveled to the Oneida Cannery, where participants were able to learn about the process of canning apples. The beans, and then you just put them into the lemon water. What the lemon water does is gonna help keep them from turning the Food Sovereignty Summit hosted a variety of breakout sessions. One of the issues discussed was diabetes. The Navajo Nation is fighting this disease in a unique way. Well, one of the legislations that we passed, one, out, one of three, um, is the Healthy Foods Tax Law. Many of our people were driving to the neighboring town, the border town, to purchase food at zero percent. And our Navajo Nation, we were being taxed at 5%. And we decided, hey, let's eliminate the tax. So we eliminated the tax on fresh fruits and fresh vegetables, nuts, nut butter, seeds, and water. There were other sessions about indigenous foods, their history, and how to harvest and prepare them. The Tribal Syrup Cooperative explained how maple syrup was used as an economic resource historically. Uh, historically, too, it's also been used as sugar. Uh, rather than the maple syrup, it's more transportable that way and it's better utilized as a, as a tradable economic resource too. And just kind of touching on some of the numbers that, that Dan had brought up earlier, in uh, 1866, the Menominee tribe produced about 75,000 pounds of sugar. And to kind of put that into context is that that requires about 3.2 million gallons of sap. The Youth and Agricultural Session demonstrated how the Bad River Chippewa tribe harvested and prepared wild rice. Joseph Kadat explains. Um, once we have harvested the rice, we dry it out. Um, harvest it in the sun, we grow it for a day, dry it out, helps uh, with the next process. Um, we're scorching the rice. The evenings were filled with events that spotlighted native foods. Native chefs prepared a variety of foods. Those in attendance got to sample everything from buffalo to venison and many other native dishes. The United Smoke Dancers put on a social. Those in attendance were also asked to participate in some of the social dances. 
We look forward to the next conference with anticipation on learning more about food sovereignty and working together to become self-sustaining communities.